Hello and welcome to worship on this transfiguration of our Lord's Sunday. We are so glad that you are here worshiping with us. Just a few announcements. On Wednesday is Ash Wednesday and we'll be doing a live stream service at 6 p.m. Please join us. Um, ashes can be picked up before Wednesday. We actually the, the bulletin, we, we changed it yet again. We'll send out an email reminder. Ashes can now be found in a little box outside the social hall, so you can just drive by and pick them up at your leisure. And uh, please only take one packet per family. It may look like it's a not that much. It is plenty of ashes for you and your family uh, to administer and impose uh, when we impose them here at 6 p.m. on Wednesday. So please come pick up your ashes throughout the week. Council is this Tuesday, looking forward uh, to seeing everybody on Zoom. And Food Bank is happening on February 20th with their continued drive-through distribution. Thank you to everyone for continuing to keep up that ministry in this much needed time. A special thank you to Art Lindsay, who has continued to do uh, work on the church, even while our building has been closed. We are still doing a ton of work to keep this building um, nice and beautiful. He fixed the windows over here outside the sanctuary and is now doing work on the women's restroom. So thank you, Art, for your love and support and gifts of time that you've given to the congregation. And with that, we begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is a reading from the second chapter of Second Kings. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, 
Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them. As they were both were standing by the Jordan, then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended into a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see them, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. Here ends the reading. Psalm 50 will be read responsively. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. A Zion perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame, and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause, for God himself is judged. The second lesson is a reading from the fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, 
one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. And they were coming down the mountain. He ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I've been thinking a lot about mountaintop experiences. People talk about these life-changing moments, some literally while climbing mountains or in nature, moments of childbirth, getting the ideal job, qualifying for the Olympics, graduations, or just some profound revelation. They are these moments that change our lives. I feel as though it's really easy to compare my mountaintop experiences to other people's. And at times I feel bitter, especially in a pandemic, when I feel like I'm being robbed of moments that should be some of the best of my life. I'm paying my dues, checking off all the boxes, doing all the things, and yet my mountaintop experiences seem to be out of grasp which has made me think. Maybe I just need to look at the mountain from a different angle. And when we do that, a whole new world opens up. Did you know that some of the world's largest mountains are actually underwater? They are called sea mounts. And measured from base to peak, they are the wonders of the deep. Their peaks crowned by reefs teeming with sea creatures, and these sea mounts are a force that disrupts the water's current flow. The flow is moving, hits the sea mounts, goes up, forms a giant donut vortex that comes back down, drops plankton and other sea creatures down the mountainside, and feeds the many creatures on the side of the mountain. It's formed just like their land-based cousins. The underwater mountains are formed by volcanic and tectonic activity. There are over 10,000 seamounts in just the Pacific. And maybe, because it's wintertime, I'm thinking about icebergs. As they float in the blue water with just a fraction of their mass visible from above, The true beauty of these ice giants are below. 90% of icebergs are hidden underneath the water's surface. Seamounts, icebergs, Vicar Elizabeth, what does any of this have to do with us? Well, if there are different types of mountains in nature, how many types of mountains are in our own lives? You see, it's not just the 10% that breaks through the Earth's surface that we should name and recognize the importance of, although those are the happy ones to recall. It's not just the towering peaks that we should be sharing that we've climbed, but what about the 90% that's below the surface, the dark depths that nobody talks about? the underwater, underground, underneath seamounts that we are climbing every day and no one sees. These moments occur all around us every day. And they may not seem like formative things, may not seem like mountaintop experiences we're going to tweet about, but they are what make up the mountain. And we need to name them. Name the hard stuff. Name the injustices. Name the oppression. Name the shared humanity we all have, because that is how we will experience transfiguration. That is how we experience transformation. We don't just make it up the mountaintop unchanged. That's why today's gospel is so important. 
transfiguration matters. It's not just a convenient event to mark the Sunday between Epiphany and Lent. It's not just a crazy, wondrous, bizarre story that occurs to Jesus on a mountaintop. We need transfiguration. This story is not just about Jesus' revelation of his glory, but a recognition of the deep human need for transformation change, conversion, makeover, metamorphosis. The transfiguration is a turning point. Smack dab in the middle of the Gospel of Mark, where we will all soon turn and walk down the mountain, down into the wilderness through the journey of Lent, and continue our journey to the cross. Transfiguration means change. And change is difficult. Real change, transformative change, godly change is difficult. We think we welcome change. But when it actually happens, we adopt stances of resistance and rejection, even disbelief. Or convince ourselves that the change can wait, that the time is not right, that the problems that will ensue are not worth the result of living into the consequences of that change, which is essentially what Peter does. He says, it is good for us to be here. Let us pitch tents and stay right here. I think Peter's issue is the realization that if Jesus changes, then Peter will be changed as well. And that's a terrifying thought. And maybe he doesn't want that. Maybe he just wants to pitch some tents and hunker down. And maybe we also want to do just what Peter does and stay the same. But then God kind of yells at Peter and says, this is my son. The beloved, listen to him. See, he can't stay on this mountaintop with you. He's got to walk down into the depths and the messiness of life. Walk the path to the cross. Down, says preacher David Lowe's quote. Down into the mundane nature of everyday life. Down into the nitty-gritty details of misunderstanding, squabbling, disbelieving disciples. Down into the religious and political quarrels of the day. Down into the jealousies and rivalries, both petty and gigantic, that color our relationships. Down into the poverty and pain that are part and parcel of our life in this world. Down. Jesus came down. End quote. And if Peter is to listen to Jesus, God's son, then he must walk down with Jesus to go where he goes, side by side, leaning into transformation. And if we are to listen to Jesus, then we must walk down to side by side, leaning into transformation to realize our own transfiguration. We walk with Jesus transformed the difficulties of humanity, sharing with us the suffering and pain, hardship and effort, even walks with us through the valley of death. This story also tells us of Jesus' brilliance, of his clothes on that mountain that became amazingly bright, brighter than any person could bleach something. Jesus reveals he has access to power from God. Jesus wraps us up in his garments of light as we journey to the mountaintop and back down. And the Apostle Paul imagines, sort of, in today's passage from 2 Corinthians, he says, God has shown into our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ. We have this treasure in clay pots. So it's clear that this awesome power belongs to God and doesn't come from us, but God 
wraps us in God's sustaining power. We may experience all kinds of trouble, but we won't be crushed. We may be confused, but we won't be depressed. We may be harassed, but we won't be abandoned. We may be knocked down, but we won't be knocked out. Even if our bodies are wasting away, Paul says, deep within we are being renewed. Deep within, we are growing more glorious. Deep within, we are being held safe and transfigured by God. Even in the valley, Christ's presence and power are available to give God's people the courage and strength to do what we need to do, which is to follow him. Transfiguration means a new way of seeing the world, taking a look at the sea mounts underneath it all that make up the mountaintops. And so I'd like to leave you with excerpts from Amanda Gorman's poem, The Hill We Climb, which she recited on January 6th at the inauguration of Biden-Harris. When day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never-ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace. And the norms and notions of what just is isn't always justice. And yet the dawn is ours. Before we knew it, somehow we do it. That even as we grieved, we grew. That even as we hurt, we hoped. That even as we tired, we tried. That we'll forever be tied together victorious. If we are to live up to our own time, then victory won't lie in the blade, but in all the bridges we've made. This is the promise to Glade, the hill we climb, if only we dare. How could we possibly prevail over catastrophe? Now we assert, how could catastrophe possibly prevail over us? We will not march back to what was, but move to what shall be. For there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. As we experience Transfiguration Sunday, and we journey down the mountaintop into the wilderness, into the journey of Lent, we are reminded that the light is always there walking with us as we move forward side by side with Jesus, for there is always light. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us proclaim our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the gospel proclaimed in word and deed, for communities of faith far and near, and for all who show the faith of Christ throughout the world, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For creation, sun, moon, and stars, life forming in the dark earth and ocean deep, Mountains and sea mounts, clouds and storms, and creatures seen and unseen. And for the Holy Spirit's guidance in our stewardship of God's creation, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those responsible for safety and protection, for emergency responders and security guards, attorneys and advocates, civil servants and leaders of governments, that they witness to mercy and justice throughout the world. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all who suffer this day, especially Steph, Steve, Kathy, Cham, Brian, and all those we name aloud or in our hearts, that Christ our healer transforms sickness into health, loneliness into companionship, bereavement into consol consolation, and suffering into peace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God, for companions on life's journey in this worshiping community, for loved ones who cannot be with us this day, and for guidance during struggles we face that God's glory is revealed around and among us. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their earthly pilgrimage, that their lives of service and prayer inspire us in our living, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of peace. peace. <laughs> and let us give thanks to the Lord God's gifts that we have received. Oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us. Like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. And let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. People of God, receive this blessing. May God the Creator strengthen you. Jesus the Beloved fill you, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace, be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>